Nate, you put out a really fascinating article this week where you've created your own algorithm. So we don't even have to watch this season. You've already been able to tell us what's going to happen, correct? Uh, so we made an algorithm. That part's correct. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's pretty good. Um, I, I did. I ran the bowl games last year and compared it to the SP Plus, uh, which is the ESPN kind of gold standard. And it did very well there, at least. Um Comparison against the spread, not quite as good straight up. We made some tweaks to it, um, and now it's fairly comparable straight up and against the spread to SP+. Plus. But uh, we predicted all the games, right, as you said. But going into the season, you know, it's such a – so many variables going in that I, I think we should still watch the games and, and take this with a little bit of grain of salt at least, yeah. Let's start with how you create this algorithm. What goes into it? And I know that's something we could probably take the next three hours talking about. But in simple terms, what do you use as the basis for the ranking of the teams, which you then use to determine who will beat who? Yep. So um, for those people who read me at For the Blog Year, have followed any of what I've done over the past couple of years, um, I create a defensive and offensive efficiency uh, metric, which is some combination of explosive scoring and ball control and, and some other things. And to go into the preseason, I take last year's offensive and defensive efficiency and then a little bit from the year previous and a little bit from the year previous that because teams tend to, you know, have momentum and, and there is some carryover year over year. Um, certainly 2019 is weighted far lower than 2021, uh, but we use that plus a little bit of, expectation about the incoming talent um, and put all that together uh, and then you get a team's offensive and defensive efficiency expectation for this year um, you compare that to their opponent using a Monte Carlo simulation so basically um, a random number generator that's between the expected maximum and the expected minimum you run that a thousand times and you come up with an average score and then we also looked at um, each simulation, the probability of different point differentials for the games, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's get to the Penn State season that you projected. Spoiler alert, let's get it from you, Nate. What did you project as Penn State's record for the season? I have them at 8.42 wins and 3.58 losses, which, you know, I don't know. If anybody in Vegas is listening and would like to hire me to build projections, I would be happy to do that. Um, and then on an absolute basis, eight, eight and four. Again, I, I hate that. I don't think that's, I think we're going to, I think they are going to be far better than that. I think they're going to be, you know, closer to 10 wins or more. Um, but that's where it shakes out right now. And a lot of that is a function of the mediocre offensive performance over the last two years, really dragging them down. And let's, let's just say the four losses, you have them losing to Purdue, Auburn, Michigan and Ohio State, correct? Yep, yep. And Purdue, I mean, if we just take one second on that, Purdue is a – actually, it's I have them a 30% chance of beating Purdue, but, again, it's very close. It's within a point and a half. Auburn, um, I give them 42.3%. Um, that's within 0. 0.5 points on average. So, you know, that's, again, within the home field average swing. Um, Michigan, they have a 9% chance to beat Michigan. They, they – I'm, they're projected to lose by nearly a touchdown. Uh, and then Ohio State, we shall not talk about right now. <laughs> okay. Well, if you look at it, I, I looked at the season, and another spoiler alert, because I'll talk about my predictions later, but my proje- I typically, when I look at a season, I look at the games, these are the wins, these are the losses, and these handful of games are what will sway the season. Mm-hmm. And I looked at two games that are I project as losses, which are Ohio State and Michigan. And the couple games, I actually had a third game, but two of the three games that I had as, these are the toss-up games that will determine their season. Two of the three are Purdue and Auburn, which are the closest games that you have projected for Penn State, but you have them both on the losing side. So those two games themselves could be the difference between eight and four, nine and three, yeah. and ten and two in essence. Correct? I, I think I think that's true, right? Because yeah, I have them like the Purdue and Auburn, as I said, are basically within the margin that I gave them for home field advantage. And I just looked yesterday at Athlon, and Auburn picked to finish last in the SEC West 
Penn State should be able to beat the last place team in the SEC West. Um, Purdue, better probably than people expect going into the season. I have them overall ranked 23rd to Penn State's 16th. But, you know, they and you'll see something coming out of for the blogging next week. They've lost a lot of offensive weapons. They lost some start, a lot of starters on defense. Um, maybe they're a little bit overrated going into the year, whereas Penn State, um, with tons of offensive weapons and knock on wood, a strong offensive line is probably a little underrated offensively. So we'll learn a lot in that first game about, you know, really the trajectory that we expect for Penn State and, you know, the Big Ten West.